beer is one of the oldest recorded recipes in the world. The ancient Egyptians first documented the brewing process on scrolls around 5,000 BC. And what is the basis for this brewing process that brings us craft, hazy, hoppy, light, and frosty beer today? Fermentation. To put it simply, fermentation is the natural process of breaking down sugars by microorganisms like yeast or bacteria. So in the case of beer, yeast help convert barley to beer. This ancient process is highly efficient and now revolutionizing food production today and just may be a key player in a transition to a low-carbon food system. According to the United Nations FAO, the world's population is expected to grow by 2 billion people to reach more than 9 billion people in 2050. This population increase and the expected dietary changes associated with income growth indicate that by 2050, about 60% more food will be needed globally to meet demand. Global food production contributes up to 29% of our planet's greenhouse gas emissions. So, our challenge is, how can we produce more nutritious food using less resources and emitting fewer greenhouse gas emissions while protecting biodiversity and the resilience of our ecosystems. Algae. Most of you likely have an image of seaweed or stagnant ponds covered with green film. But actually, algae starts as a single cell organism. Microalgae are the origin of all plant life, as well as the original microorganism that created oxygen and the ability for life on planet Earth to exist. The breakthrough here is growing algae in the dark via fermentation, harnessing the power of this tiny microorganism to shift towards a low carbon food system. Let me give you an example. Fish oil. Most of us don't eat fish oil directly, but we do indirectly through our love of farmed salmon, shrimp, and sea bass. Farmed seafood is some of the healthiest and lowest carbon emitting animal proteins we can eat. Historically, fish oil was the only direct source of long-chain omega-3s, which are critical for both animal and human health. But fish oil is a limited resource. There is only about 1 million metric tons a year harvested from the ocean. That's it. Seafood farmers depend on fish oil as a key ingredient in aquaculture feed, and several United Nations agencies have identified seafood and aquaculture as a highly important food system for feeding our growing population. So how do we meet the rapidly growing demand for fish oil and farmed seafood? You guessed it, microalgae. Turns out that marine microalgae are the original source of long-chain omega-3s. In the wild, marine microalgae are at the base of the food chain for fish. Large fish eat smaller fish that eat zooplankton that eat microalgae. By growing the marine microalgae via fermentation, we take the middle fish out and can produce an abundant, clean, and sustainable source of long-chain omega-3s and help reduce our dependency on forage fish for fish oil. This is how it works. One of the largest algae fermentation facilities in the world sits among the sugarcane fields in south-central Brazil. There, algae-based omega-3s are produced as an alternative to fish oil. The algae facility is next door to a sugarcane mill. The sugarcane is harvested from a 30-kilometer radius from fields that have been harvested for generations and thousands of kilometers away from the Amazon rainforest. The sugarcane is crushed at the sugar mill, and the sugar is delivered over the fence to the algae facility where it is fed to algae in large fermentation tanks. The algae divide rapidly and grow plump with oil, and they look like tiny water balloons, actually about the size of a tenth of a width of a piece of hair. When the process is done, the algae are removed and dried, and the oil-filled algae are then added as an ingredient to fish feed. But where the carbon wind comes in here is that all the sugarcane waste left over after crushing it to make the sugar is used to provide all of the renewable energy to power both the sugar mill and the algae production. Think about this. A hectare of land produces both the fuel 
and the feedstock to grow algae omega-3s, an abundant alternative to fish oil, and it's produced in a matter of days without regard to season. This algae is produced at scale and incorporated in feed for salmon today. In fact, algae omega-3s are now included in more than 25% of Norwegian salmon feed and it continues to grow throughout other farmed seafood sectors. There are thousands of species of algae, and this same fermentation process can be applied. We are already seeing products containing algae protein on shelves today. Again, that means abundant plant sugars are converted to protein in a matter of days via fermentation. Algae is just one example of how microorganisms can revolutionize our food production and help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. For example, yeast is used to transform abundant plant sugars into ingredients that can mimic egg proteins and milk proteins without the need for chickens and cows. Then there is fermentation via bacteria to make lactic acid, a key ingredient in prolonging the shelf life of bread and meat, which is critical in reducing food waste. Food waste is a major driver of greenhouse gas emissions related to food production. Microorganisms have the power not only to transform the way we produce our food, but also the way we make bio-based materials for our emerging bioeconomy. Resins, textiles, and food packaging all are being made by materials produced through fermentation. Fermentation, my friends, one of the oldest technologies in the world may be just what saves us. To truly achieve a low-carbon food system, we need a diversity of production systems and food sources to meet the needs of a growing population. So when you relax with a beer or a glass of wine tonight, enjoy the fruits of fermentation from the past and embrace a new generation of delicious, nutritious foods for a thriving people and planet. Thank you.